Okay. Thank Hashem. We're able to learn every day. Start a new Mishachta. It's also a learning Immediately. Okay, so the Mishnah starts. Kol Kine Nadarim Kine Nadarim. A Kine is a substitute for a name, for a uh, word um, that's usually used with a nether. Normally, a person by a nether would say, the nether's vow. He says that this food should be forbidden to me, like a carbon. Kine Nadarim would be, if he doesn't say like a carbon, he says like a, like a, Kaina, he um, makes a nickname for the word karma. Yeah. The Gemara is going to discuss if those nicknames are actually other languages. And he's saying it in another language. That would mean any other language would also be the same thing. It doesn't have to be Kainam, it could be speaking in English. Huh? Um, another opinion is no that the sages uh, made up these uh, these nicknames for the daughter. Okay, the Ran in, in his um, first large piece here gives us an introduction. He says that there's two types of the daughter is hectish, nidri hectish, where someone takes a vow that he's going to have this, this item is dedicated to the temple or as a sacrifice. He says that there's two two uh, rules that apply to such a vow. That is that first of all, it has to be his. He can't dedicate someone else's property. The second thing is, is that once he does it, if it is his, he does it, then the halacha applies to everyone. It becomes a karban where no one can use it. It becomes sanctified. Then there's another type of nether, which is called nitra yisr. So those two rules are there. First of all, it doesn't have to be his. You can say that your item is forbidden to yeah. your item is forbidden to me. So this wasn't even mine. Nevertheless, it's a it's a it's forbidden. Second thing is that it's only forbidden to me. And to make it forbidden for everyone else. So those are two two differences. Okay. Um Okay, so the let's go further. Haramim. Uh, Haramim say there's several types of haramim, but um, usually we think of khirim as someone was excommunicated. But here, we're, we're just referring to, it's another type of, it's another type of battle. Some want to learn that it actually means a dedication to the temple. Like the, which that would be, Kermi Beda Kabayas. And, um, Ron writes that that wouldn't that, that wouldn't fit into our Masech, that, that belongs in Seder Kachim. It says here it's a it means um Kerem is a is a type of issue, type of uh, prohibition. Again, what we what we're seeing here is that what we saw in in Ksubis, it's like uh, how does something become uh, a condition and a document and a and uh, all of those things that becomes like a, yeah, something that could be upheld in court, right? If there is a document, it's not here we're talking about where someone's words become so strong that, that it's as if it's upheld in court, right? It's like it's like a Kenya. It's only relevant for Isser, but it's like it's a vow that takes effect just because of his words. He doesn't have to do anything else. For it. Shvois, shvois. And the same thing is that if you wouldn't say the exact word for the shvua, I didn't tell you what the kina of haramim is. The Gemara says it. He says, cherek, 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 cherek. As he makes a nickname for the word cherem. If he makes a nickname for the shvua, what would that be? Um, I'm not sure what would be the next thing for she will end up in the numbers that are on that shit. Say over there and then a nickname for the shwa. The difference between another and a shwa we're gonna have right away on the next page. 
then. And then there is when someone makes the object prohibited on him. The shmuz when he says that he is not going to, to, to eat that object. Not that the object is, is forbidden. It, but, but, well, it could be, the shmuz could also be a problem. But a nether is, is, is not a positive. Shmuz is, is an oath. And he says that I either will eat or I will not. Or, he, or it could be, yeah, I did eat or I didn't eat. But and the nether is when he makes an object prohibited. He says, this object is prohibited. You get the mark? Yeah, Hataras Nidaram works for sure as well. Well, um, it's a big discussion here in the round if he has to say Hashem's name. Um, that's considered the uh, well, only with Hashem's name or even without. Yeah, quotes are being a term that it's uh, that there's a difference between if other people are making him swear or if he's swearing on his own. If other people are making him swear, then he has to say something. And he has a problem with the, with the Ran. The, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the Ran has a problem with Rabin Atam. He doesn't accept this uh, job. The end, though, the Ravid says, he quotes the Ravid that says that if there's Malchus, it must be because he said Hashem's name. No, if, if it's a true swear, then if we don't just swear, then likely, you know, then likely, but if it's true, then. So, that's all. The question is, is it an oath without Hashem's name? Okay. The Kinoi for, for Shavua is Shavuta. What is it? Shavuta? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a real lot. I mean, we we avoid swearing, but if a person has to, he has to. In court, sometimes a person has to swear. Probably when they become a citizen, also they have to swear. And the zeros can the The same thing would be if someone doesn't say the full word that um, I am a nazir. He says I am a nazik or a nazif, or he uses some other nickname. Um, Okay. What we introduced here was the Kino of Nedar. The Iker Nedar, the main Nedar, that would be if he said this is uh, this is to me prohibited like the carbon. Kino is when he doesn't use the word carbon. Okay. There's one more point here, and that's called um, if he makes a Nedar without any Hatfasa at all. When he says it's like a carbon, that means he is grabbing it, he's attaching it onto a carbon. He's doing this comparison. You could also do it without the comparison. And it would also be, well, there's the, it's a discussion. If he does it without the comparison, is it an ikan? Is it an ikan? Is that a real? Okay. Um, it's a discussion here in the round. Someone tells his friend, I am avowed from you. Means I'm not going to have um, benefits from you. Mufushani mimcha, I am separated from you. Muruchukani mimcha, I am uh, distanced from you. Shani oichala, that I eat from you. There's two versions to this mission. It's either this is actually um, introducing a new concept called yad. A yad is like a handle where he doesn't actually finish off what he wants to say, he begins saying, and, and we consider it that's just like we, the way you handle, you don't hold the actual pot, you just hold the handle. So because of just the word that he said, that's enough that we jump to conclusions that that's what he meant. So, or he says, there's two verses, Shani one is She'eni Yoichala, that I will not eat from you. Then it's sort of, sort of like, um, you just didn't say the word Shmuel there, right? Um, that I taste from you. So then all of those take effect and it's usher. 
Well, it's the same thing. It's just the AI. Right. Right. Shani Aichala. Yeah, that's the other version where it's, well, he means that in reference, in reference to me eating from you. Regarding me eating from you. Yeah, yeah, it's over. So, um, uh, let's say he says, I'm in, in need from you. Well, what's need Nida is a type of cheirim, but it's of lesser severity. So, Rabbi Kiva, um, was hesitating to be machmer. Not hes- he was he wanted anticipating to be machmer. Big discussion what the word cheirim means, but um, um, some say that it means he was rubbing, like rubbing against the wall and thinking. Like today we do we. You know, he's scratching his head. So uh, and it's, he's considering it. But that's he was he was like scratching against the wall or something to this is possibly uh, effective. He says no Okay. The Rashis um, on this Masech, uh, um, for some reason get uh, left to the side. I think even the base of in uh, tour says that uh, he doesn't call it Rashi, he calls it Barish. And then uh, it's a common saying that the Rashi and the Dada was written by his daughters. Rashi's daughters. So, in place of that, they put the Ran. The Ran is like a mixture between a Rashi and a Taisvis. He, he explains simply like Rashi, but he elaborates a lot, brings other Gemaras like Taisvis. And there is a Taisvis. That could be, could be that we lost it, but I'm sure Rashi had seen it myself. Then I'm sure. Okay. Well, okay. Mara starts off, Kol Kine Nedarim Kinedarim. Like an introduction. So we've mentioned that all nicknames of, or all substitutes for Nadarim are considered Nadarim. Maishna Gabi Nasid like Tani Lulukulu, Maishna Gabi Nadarim, the Tani Lukulu. The language, well, the the Mesachtas um, Nazir says, called Kina Naziris, Naziris. And that's the whole story. Every every substitute for Nazir is, is uh, considered a Nazir. By Nadarim, start Nadarim, it lists Nadarim and Haramim and Shuas and Naziris. And it has other things. The question is why by Nadarim did it give us the whole list? Why by Naziris did it only tell us uh, the one halacha regarding Nazir? Uh, he says, even if he doesn't say the word Nazir, he says Nazik, that's considered like a nickname for Nazir. Why over there does it only say one and over here it says all of these? The Gemara says, Mishim Deneder Shvua Sibiga Beyadad in Tanitar. Because in the Pasuk, it says that if a person takes a vow to Hashem or he takes an oath, but because Neder comes together with Shvua, so we added Kalkin in the Darim, all substitutes of Nedarim, and then we added in all substitutes of Shvuas. And then first Haramim. And then we added an interest list. So that's why we have more than that. Even the Tani Tartan, Tani Lakula. Once we were going to list two of them, then we just listed everything. Okay. Gemara says, listen to Kini Shvus, Bas in the Dharam. It's not in order. If you wanted just to put the Dharam in, so it should have, uh, uh, Shvus together with the Dharam, it's called Kini Nadharam, Kini Nadharam, Shvus Kishvus. And then you want to list others, put them later. Why does it say kine nadarim, kine nadarim, haram, haram, and then it says shvois? It sounds like the answer is there's something missing in the answer. Um, so the Gemara answers this well, I did the tan in the darim, the mitzah heftzale, tan in ami haram, and the mitzah heftzale, la puki shvo, the kosen of shei min heftzale. We get the big major translation here. Um, 
the difference between a nether and a shua? Since the nether is the object becoming prohibited and not the person making the prohibition on himself, and the cherem is also the object becoming prohibited, so we put the two that have the object becoming prohibited together. And then afterwards, we said shavua, which is the person becoming prohibited to do, to do the action. Okay. Yeah, the yeshivas love this. Uh, they divided up into God for You know, they basically then went on to the rest of the, based on this difference between the and the they then went on to the rest of the 613 mitzvahs. And they say, is it an obligation for the Lula to be put together with the Asrid? Or is the obligation for you to put, does the, is the mezuzah an obligation on the house? Or is it an obligation for you to put up? Is it, they went to the rest of the, thinking about this. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a combination of both somewhere. So, Pasach um, we started off saying Kinoyim. Kol Kinin Nedarim. Umefarish Yadis. But then, when the Mishnah continues, the, the Gemara is analyzing the Mishnah. It says, Ha'im al-Chaverim, Mudani Memcha. Discusses the Yad. Yad means the handle. Where he doesn't actually spell out what he's saying. He only in, intimates what, what he wants to say. And then we have to guess the rest, but we do, we make this assumption. But it it didn't introduce that in the heading of the Mishnah. The heading of the Mishnah was substitutes for the word carbon, which was acceptable. And instead, and when it comes to the details, it starts telling me details of some other some other heading. And another question is, Vesu Yadai Sinshi, I forgot to mention that Yadais are considered like the Dharam, that the, that the handle, these intimations are, are actually uh, considered like another. I forgot to mention that in the heading. So two questions here. The Gemara answers the second question first. The Gemara says, first of all, I read behind. No, it does mention it. Chasuri Mechs is just missing words, the Mishnah. We have this sometimes. Yeah, I think that's also considered a yeah, when you say in me as well. I think that's also considered a yeah. Is that a yeah? He said, someone is walking by, he puts a there and he says, me too. I think it does very much kind of it. Pick up with both hands. Pick it up with a hand. That's good enough. So it's like, Right. 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 So, um, our example in the Mishnah was when he says, um, I am avowed from you. What did he mean about that? He didn't finish off to say that it's like a carbon. Possibly he didn't even say that it's pretty, that it's, it's going to be awesome. He says, Shani Yekala. That could also be. He didn't even spell out the whole, uh, the whole prohibition. Whatever it is, he didn't finish the sentence. So uh, the Gemara says that you know, it actually is missing words, and it is there. How, how does it say it? It says, Kol kine nedarim kine nedarim. Nedarim kine, kine Also, yadis are like nedarim. Okay. Now the Gemara goes back to answer the first question. Why doesn't it explain the first heading? Nicknames. It jumped. It, it jumped. It didn't give us the details of what would be a nickname. Uh, an, a, um, a substitute for the word carbon. So the Gemara answers, listen to this from Moshe. It says, Who the Salak Mine, a who Mefarish Parisha. It starts to explain the last of the, of the heading. That's interesting. I guess it's only going to explain the Dara. It's not going to explain the Shavuos Haram and other things. So, so therefore, in the Dharam itself, I have Kinin the Dharam and Yadis the Dharam. It's only explaining the Yadis, which is the second one. 
The Gemara says, Kibitnan, and I'll prove it to you that this is the way the Mishnah works. It says, Bamem Madlikin about Bamein Madlikin. What type of wicks and oil are you allowed to use on Shabbos for the, and not on Shabbos, for the, on Erev Shabbos for the candles? And it starts to say, Ain Madlikin, the ones that you're not allowed to use. Instead of which ones are you allowed, which one are you not? So that's to say, which ones are you not? See, it finishes, it, it, it gives me the examples of the later one. And then afterwards, it's going to tell me what I can use, but it lists the the, the second part of the heading or the first part of the heading. By, by, with what are you allowed to use to wrap a pot on Shabbos? What are you not allowed to use? And it goes on to explain what you're not allowed to use. Ain't time instead of saying the first one. Shabbos, yeah. What is a woman allowed to go out with in the uh, public property on Shabbos? Types of jewelry and different things. What is she not allowed to go out to? She's not allowed to go out with this and that. Well, you say teach the Gemara says, okay, so if that's the style. What are you telling me? That every time it says um, a, a possibility of, every time it gives a list, it's always going to start detailing the last of the list. It's not true. But now we have another Mishnah. Sometimes you have a person that is an inheritor and can also bequeath. He'll also give over the inheritance. So you have sometimes a person that inherits, but he doesn't bequeath. What would that be? Well, um, the inheritor would be the sons and the father. The, the, the father can inherit the son if the son passes away, and the son can inherit the father. The, um, let's say it's a son with the mother. The mother doesn't inherit the son, but the son inherits from the mother. So that's a case of Neuchlin. The mother gives over the the, the mother uh, gives over, but doesn't herself doesn't inherit from the son. No, because it's going to say what's allowed as well. It's going to say what's allowed. In these cases, it's going to say what's allowed as well. It's just we're, we're thinking about if we give, if we say, um, yeah, that would be a good example. But as it goes back to Elam, it goes back to the Yeah, Elam, it's Yeshua, 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 which one does it then delineate? The one that you have to call out or the one that you have to, that you're allowed to keep? It goes back to the one that you're allowed to keep. It goes back to the first one. So if you have, um, what are you allowed? What are you not allowed? And then you start to say what you're not allowed. That means you're continuing with the second one. What are you allowed? What are you not allowed? And you say what you're allowed. That means you're going back in order to what you started with first. So we okay. said, they repeat the title. Yeah, but over here, we're also repeating the title. Yeah. So this is all Yeah. Yeah, what's the style of, of, uh, of quoting and, and uh, listing? So the problem over here is it says, it goes back to the first one in order. I have two possibilities, two cases that it lists, two things, and then it's going to tell me what does it tell me first? It tells me the first case, not the second one. Then. What's the what is the that mission in Yavamas is talking about that it's possible that a person is allowed to is permissible to his own wife, but he's forbidden to his sister in law. Why is that? Because he's a kind god and he's married, but his sister in law is an almana. Obviously, the husband dies, Yavama. So a kind god can't marry the Yavama. But then it's possible also the other way that he happened to marry in sin his wife. Um um, yeah, his wife was a widow. Um, what was the case? Asuris the Balayam. Matars the Vimayam, Asuris the Balayam. How could that be? That a clean guddle should be permissible to. Uh, Well, the answer over here is, is he dies, the kind of dies. 
and his brother, which is a Kayan Hedin, that's allowed to marry his wife. I'm sorry. Yeah, a common priest just means that he's not the high priest. A high priest is not allowed to marry a widow. A common priest is allowed to marry a widow. So if the lady doesn't go into under this category at all, the lady can marry a widow. It's a common. Okay, um, next case. Some of the offerings of the flour and, and oil offerings require also the frankincense. The levina. Some only require the oil without the frankincense. The cases that require the frankincense and the oil are those that those um, the regular cup mincha that someone donates, the flour mincha or the fry pan mincha, you know, the deep pan mincha. That you have to put levina on it as well. You would do kmitza on the on the flour and the oil, and then you would take the levina off as well to to be burnt. But there is. Another type of mincha, which comes along with the karban, is called the minchas nesachim. Every time a person brings a sacrifice in the Rambam, that he has to bring together with it, um, has to bring together with it the flour and oil that, that is the, that's associated with that type of animal, the amount, the certain amount for, for each animal. Well, over there, there's no levina. So, but then when it, it delineates it, it goes back and it tells me the first case. The some things need to be brought close to the altar and they don't need to be waved. Some things need to be waved. Waved is that they would hold it underneath and they would bring it to the direction, different directions like they do with the lula. But but they don't need to be brought close. The What needs to be waved is the, the jug of oil of the Mitzayra. It needs to be brought close is the um, the, the offering and it, then when it lists it it tells me the first one the one that needs to be brought close there is a firstborn that he's a firstborn for inheritance which means that he gets a double portion but he's not a firstborn regarding to the event He gets the double portion for inheritance, but he doesn't have to do a Kadina Ben. He's not a first, he's not a hundred percent the firstborn, but he's still a firstborn for how would that work? Well, um, let's say there were stillborns, uh, miscarriages that were before his birth. So he's considered the firstborn regarding the father, that he's the father's first child, living child, one that the father cares about because it came out alive, but it's not the opening of the womb regarding um, uh, redemption from the Kohen. B'chol HaKayin v'in B'chol HaNachler could be the opposite. Could be he's only a B'chol HaKayin, but he's not a firstborn regarding inheritance. How would that work? The person has more than one wife. Right. So his other, his first son that was born from whichever wife, that's the B'chol HaNachler. That's the one that gets a double portion. But the second wife maybe has the opening of the womb later. So he's not a firstborn for inheritance, but he's a firstborn for the that he has to be redeemed. And then it goes on to tell me the first one of the cases. Each one has to, yeah. Has to be equal. Yeah. <laughs> okay um so the gemara answers that really what it would like to do on a regular basis would be oh they switched it back on a regular basis what they would do is they would say you have case a and case b yeah you have this category, category A, category B, and then it would like to continue with explaining category B. So why the sometimes does it go, does it not do that? And it goes back and starts over the whole order. It starts from explaining category A. Does Halin Mishum Da Abshalei Mefarish the Pasach Well, that's because there were a lot 
option means that there were many. So that's why it went back to explain it in order. Normally it wouldn't do that. Now there's two explanations for this. One explanation is the option lay because there was more than one category. If there's more than one category, it doesn't continue from then, it goes back to the beginning. The other explanation is not that more than one category, that there's more than one detail in the category. So it wants to go back to the beginning to start it over from the, the larger amount. Oh, option, option, more, more than one option. Um, the Gomara asks one second, talks about when it, there's an animal and it talks about, it goes back to the beginning. It goes back to category A. It restarts the whole thing. Rather, it's not specific. I could do it like this, I could do it like that. Zimna Mafarashu, the Pasach Bresha, Zimna in the Salak Mafarash Bresha. We don't really have an answer to why it does this, why it does that. It could do it either way. We have another way of saying this, that really the truth is it can do it either way. But why over here didn't it do that? Why, why, why over here did we choose this? In other words, we have a reason for what we did over here. That's about the. the Because we don't have an explanation for all the Mishnayas, but we do have an explanation for this one. Why? Because Yadis, when it came to Yadis, why does it list the Yad, the, yad, the handles of Nadarim first? Why is it that the, what's getting um, delineated? Is Aidi the Asim Midrasha Mafarsh Liberation. Because the fact that that worked is not straight in the Torah. And for some reason, we have more uh, uh, appeal to to discuss the things that come from drushes, those extra things, the desserts. So the Gemara says, if that's the case, lift the chadein beresha. So why didn't you start off with yadis nedarim kinedarim? Why do you start off call kinei nedarim kinedarim? Well, niftach pasim bekinoyim dei raisa beresha. Since the kinoi, the the nickname, the substitutes is a, is a dei raisa law, so then we have to start with the dei raisa. Then we go on to explain the Yad, which is from the Drasha. So we'll give the heading from the Daraisa and first, but then we'll say the Drasha, and then we'll go on to explain the Drasha because that's what we what we really like, we like the, the Drashas. Okay. Not necessarily. It could be. The nether is it's really between him and Hashem. He says, I'm not going to to, to eat uh, whatever. Well, another would actually be, um, this food is forbidden to me. The shul would be, I'm not going to eat. Okay. Yeah. What we're discussing here is between a person and Hashem. Yeah, but the person, um, that guy doesn't really care. It's just between you and Hashem. I'm not going to eat your your things. The, uh, the person has no, the, the Reuben tells Shimon, I'm not going to eat your food. Yeah, if it's regarding Shimon, there's no relevance to that. And it sounds been unlucky, but I think it's really been other than Okay. okay. Uh, no, let's leave it over here. <laughs> no, I'm saying because it's Oh, yeah, so maybe tomorrow we'll go a little ahead. It's a good idea. Okay. Okay. Um, so Kol Nidre is based on this? Um, Kol Nidre is the annulment of vows. Kol mm. Nidre. Yeah. So it seems to have like the same structure. Kol, Kol Nidre. The Harame. The Koiname is the Kinoi. Koiname is the Kinoi of Nadarim. After Shvoi, we say the Koiname, right? The Koinam is the is the Kinoi. Yeah. Yeah. So we throw in there the Kinoi. The uh, interesting. Koinam. It's a, it's a substitute for the word Karba. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.